All right, guys, last couple of examples in the section. So let's say we're asked to graph the solution set of negative 2x minus 5y is greater than or equal to 10, or 2x uh, minus 5y is less than or equal to negative 10. Now, again, the, the first thing I want you to observe is that there are two variables here in these compound inequalities. All the ones we've done in the past, if we take a quick look, just the single variable n. So you still have compound inequalities, but just the single variable x. Compound inequality, just the single variable x. So the rules that we have to play by are going to be different. And these were the rules. Again, let's actually go through the rules as we solve these problems. So the first thing you want to do is rewrite the inequality that you're given and change it to an equation. This is just done temporarily so that we can graph it. Now, I've done both of these two separate ways. And again, there's other ways to do this as well. But this is just a reminder of things that we've done in the past. If you were asked to graph negative 2x minus 5y equals 10, one way you can do that is by finding the x and y intercept. The y intercept is when you set the x coordinate equal to 0. So that's exactly what I did here. If I plug 0 in for x, I get negative 2 times 0 minus 5y equals 10. Well, negative 2 times 0 is just 0, so that's just gone. I don't have to worry about it. So I'm left with negative 5y equals 10. And if I'm trying to solve for y, I'm going to divide both sides by the negative 5. 10 over the negative 5 will give me negative 2. So what this means is, if I plug in 0 into the equation, the y coordinate is negative 2. So that means this is the y-intercept. This is where the line crosses the y-axis. Similarly, I can find the x-intercept. And in order to find the x-intercept, we set the y-coordinate equal to 0. So same equation, negative 2x minus 5y equals 10. But instead of this y, I'm plugging in 0 right here. Negative 5 times 0 is 0, so that's gone. That, that's why this process tends to work out a little bit nicer. So you're left with negative 2x equals 10. In order to solve for x, we have to get rid of this negative 2, so I can divide it over to the other side. 10 over negative 2 is negative 5. So that tells us that the x-intercept is negative 5, 0. That's where the line crosses the x-axis. So let's recap. The first thing I needed to do was change the inequality temporarily for an equation. We did that. We need to graph the equation paying attention to the less than or greater than or whether it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So I've come up with two points that the line passes through, which are actually graphed right here or plotted below, uh, negative 5, 0 and 0, comma, negative 2. And my first line is going to pass through those two points. Now, because I have a greater than or equal to in the original inequality, the line has to be a solid line. If this had just been greater than, then I would make it a, da a dashed or a dotted line. So making this a solid line, let's see if I can get this done correctly. Oops. Uh, I might not be able to make it very straight, but. Oof, that's even worse. All right, so I'm going to assume that that's that point. We'll just make it bigger. Make sure that the line's passing through those two points. For the second one, I, I wanted to review something else. So if we're given 2x minus 5y is less than or equal to negative 10, we swap out the inequality for the equation just temporarily. So here, what I wanted to do was convert it to slope-intercept form and then use the y-intercept and the slope to graph it. Again, you have complete freedom and complete autonomy on which way or which technique you want to use to graph lines. Well, you can pick points, you can make a table of values, you can convert it to slope-intercept form, which I'm about to do, and use the slope and the y-intercept to graph it, or you can find the x and y-intercepts. All these things are available to you. The more you do these problems, the more hopefully obvious it becomes on which technique is actually going to be the easiest. So for this problem, I personally find that finding intercepts is going to be easiest because I know that 2 goes into 10 and 5 goes into 10. So if I plug in you know, 0 for x, I'm just solving negative 5y equals 10. If I plug in 0 for y, I'm solving negative 2x equals 10. So I know since 10 is divisible by both 2 and 5, or negative 2 and negative 5, I'm going to get intercepts as nice whole numbers. That being said, if we were to solve this for y, 
we would subtract the 2x over to the other side, leaving behind negative 5y equals negative 2x minus 10. And then we would need to get rid of this negative 5 to isolate the y. So we divide it over to the other side, which gives us negative 2 over negative 5x minus 10 over negative 5. Remember, whatever you do to one term, you have to do to each of the other terms. Negative over a negative becomes positive, so we're left with 2 over 5x. And then again, negative over negative becomes positive. 10 over 5 is 2. So what this tells us is that the y-intercept of the second line is 2, and that the slope is 2 fifths. So that means I could start at 2 on the y-axis, which I already have, and then basically just do a rise over run dance. So up 2 is going to bring me at 4, and to the right 5 is going to bring me at 5. So 5 comma 4 is the second point that this line passes through. Let's see if I can make this line any better. Oh, wow. All right. Almost perfect. Now let's look at, uh, oh, I forgot to ask. This one also had a little bit uh, of an equal sign in it, so I know that I had to make it a solid line. But if that had been just less than, but not less than or equal to, then this blue line that we made would need to be dotted. Then the third instruction is to pick a test point not on the line. And just like we have in the past sections, always pick the origin if it's not on the line. It's going to be the easiest thing to do computations with. So we pick a test point that is not on the line, and we plug it into the inequality. And we're looking for whether we get something true or false. So here, if I plug the origin into the first inequality, I'm going to get negative 2 times 0. I guess I'll be consistent with my colors. Negative 2 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is greater than or equal to 10. Well, this is 0, this is 0. So you're really just left with 0 is greater than or equal to 10. And that's a false statement. 0 is not more than or equal to 10. So if we look at our solution for the green line, when we plugged in the origin, it told us a lie. So I have to shade on the opposite side of the origin. So everything below the line, down into the left of the line, this is where all the solutions are. Oops. So th this entire region, everything down and to the left of the line is where all the solutions are. I think you guys get the idea. That whole thing is filled in. Now, the origin doesn't pass through the blue line either, so we can use the origin for that line as well as a test point. 2 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is less than or equal to negative 10. 2 times 0 is 0, so that's gone. 5 times 0 is 0, that's gone. So we're really left with 0 is less than or equal to negative 10. And that again is a false statement. 0 is greater than negative 10. It is not less than or equal to negative 10. So let's pick a different color to shade. And because the origin told us a lie, we have to shade on the other side of the origin uh, with respect to this blue line. So on the other side of the origin will be everything here. So I'm shading everything above and to the left of the line. So everything there. Oops, I don't want that. All right. So we did that for the first inequality. We did that for the second inequality. The last thing we have to do is shade the appropriate region. If we have an and compound inequality, we have to shade the sandwich, meaning wherever the two regions are overlapping, that's our final answer. With an or compound inequality, anything that's covered, covered is our final answer. So in this problem, we were given an or compound inequality. We were asked, hey, what's happening if it's this region or it's this region? There's two regions with an or in the middle. So the solution set could actually be here in this region, which is like that. It could be in this third region, which is this little pie area. It could also be in this fourth region. So any of these regions 
has the solutions, which means all of it needs to be shaded, just not this region. This zero comma zero told us a lie for both inequalities, so it cannot be the fourth region that the two lines intersect in, but everything that's shaded is the solution here. Now, if we were to change things ever so slightly, I'm gonna get rid of these blue lines. And let's see if we have the exact same problem, but with an, oops, this should have been an and, I forgot to change the text. So what happens if we have the exact same problem, but instead of an or, there's an and in the middle. You would still do the exact same thing. You would change the first inequality to an equation. You would try to graph it. So I did this by using uh, x and y intercepts. You would change the second inequality to an equality and then try to graph it. I did this using the slope intercept form. And then you would graph the solutions. So I'm just gonna copy paste the graph from here. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. Now, the question is, with an and, you're looking for an overlap. So the solution is not going to be everything that's covered that's protecting us from the rain. But you have to ask yourself, where in which region do I see both green and purple or magenta or whatever that color is? Where do I see the two regions overlapping on top of each other? And hopefully you're saying to yourself, hey, it's actually just this piece. Because in this region on top, there is no green. In this region, we are shaded, but there's no magenta. In this region, we have both overlapping on top of each other. So if and when you are asked to graph the solution here, you cannot graph all the regions. The only thing you should be putting in your final answer is, I'll use a different color this time, is just this, nothing else. It's just the region to the left of uh, both lines. So what this means is if you pick a point in this shaded region, it will actually satisfy both inequalities simultaneously. If you pick a, a point here or here or here, it may satisfy one of them, but it will not satisfy both of them at the same time. And that's what and means. Both inequalities have to be satisfied simultaneously.